As we continue to honor Black History Month, we're turning our focus to historically black colleges and universities, or HBCUs, which have been pivotal to the education of African Americans for more than 100 years. Some HBCU alumnus have been grabbing the international spotlight recently. Some of those prominent leaders include Vice President Kamala Harris, Senator Raphael Warnock, and Walgreens CEO Roz Brewer. They all frequently discuss the value of HBCUs and what they hold today and how these institutions have propelled them to their respective positions. News Nation's Felicia Bolton has a look at the rich history of these schools and the values these institutions hold today. There are more than 100 historically black colleges and universities that operate today with more than 228,000 students enrolled. There was a time in American history when African Americans were not allowed to go to school at all or even read. After anti-literacy laws were dismantled, blacks in America were only permitted to receive an education in a segregated classroom. And that's how historically black colleges and universities came into existence. Now, segregation in the classroom might be gone, but many HBCU leaders feel equality in education is still not the norm. At just 14 years old, Traylon Rogers knew he wanted to be a civil rights attorney. The death of Michael Brown in 2014 was one of the events that spurred him to action. The Dallas native joined a law magnet school for high school and set his sights on creating equality and change in the U.S. It was it was those two moments that made me realize that like, this this is this is what I want to do. I, I want to fight until I, I don't have to fight because I'm going to have to fight at some point. So I can either be on the front lines or I can take it on the back end when it comes time to put in my application and they look at my name and say, I don't want to interview interview him the category. Traylon T. Rogers. Upon graduation, he chose to go to an HBCU, historically black college and university. Now, as a 21-year-old senior at Diller University in New Orleans, he's one step closer to fulfilling his dream of fighting for civil rights in the courtroom. I chose to fight on the front lines versus getting, it, getting, it, getting hit later on with it. Um, because the reality of it is, is we have to we have to pick and choose uh, when we want to fight that fight because we all have to fight uh, injustices at some point and some, at some level we're all freedom fighters in a sense. So if you want to be on the front line in March or in the courtroom and litigate or in the the Capitol and legislate, or do you want to be in the background? The U.S. Department of Education says that prior to the Civil War. There was no structured higher education system for black students. Laws prohibited the education of blacks in various parts of the nation. In 1837, the Institute of Colored Youth in Pennsylvania was the first higher education institution for African Americans. In 1869, the American Missionary Association of the Congressional Church and the Freeman's Aid Society of the Methodist Episcopal Church founded Strait University and the Union Normal School. In 1930, New Orleans University and Strait College merged to form Dillard University. Landmark Supreme Court decisions made it possible for all people to go to the school of their choosing. But Dr. Walter Kimbrough says true equality in education was not necessarily achieved through integration. We are Dillard University. He is the current president of Dillard University. Growing up in Atlanta, when, and my dad is from Atlanta, he couldn't go to the University of Georgia because it wasn't integrated until 1961, and that was done by court order. I went to the University of Georgia in 1985. So, you know, within 25 years after being forced to integrate is when I went to the University of Georgia. He says HBCUs still have value in society today. In the last 20 or 30 years, people are saying, well, we don't need HBCUs anymore because everything's integrated. You can do all these kinds of things and it doesn't prepare you for the real world. So how can you interact with the real world if you've gone to school with mostly black people? Well, you know, the civil rights generation proved that. That's exactly how they went to school and they galvanized everyone. And on the flip side, we don't ever say that about people who go to overwhelmingly white institutions. No one says, well, how can you work with black people because you've never been to school with them? Dr. Kimbrough says HBCUs are not black only, but for all students and professors of various backgrounds. Maybe about 20% of all HBCU students are not African-American. So, I mean, we're probably about 
at Dillard, maybe about four, five percent. So we're a smaller number. It just depends on the year. Um, there are some state schools that are a higher percentage. And as technically, there are some HBCUs that are majority white now, those in West Virginia. So Bluefield State and West Virginia State University. Dillard is a private institution that receives majority of funding through donations. We are under-resourced institutions that serve under-resourced people. So if 35% of all college students nationally receive the federal Pell Grant, which roughly means you come from a family that earns less than $40,000. For HBCUs, that number is about 70%. At Dillard, we're 75% Pell Grant eligible. So we have lots of high need students. He says many public HBCUs have had a lack of government funding throughout the years, which is why private donations are so valuable. In 2020, the ex-wife of Amazon's Jeff Bezos, author Mackenzie Scott, granted millions of dollars to at least 13 HBCUs. Dr. Kimbrough adds the purpose of these institutions are just as valuable today as when they were founded to include more than a month of black history, but year round academics that include in-depth history of African Americans. And Dr. Kimbrough went on to say they're working on an educational plan specifically focused on students who are being educated during the pandemic. And they're creating ways now to ensure these students get a college education in the future. Ruta Bay. Felicia, thank you. For more stories honoring Black History Month, head over to NewsNationNow.com or download the free NewsNationNow app. You can find this story and others from across the country.